Uh, my name is Shane Eaton. I'm the co-founder of Lotic. Uh, I'm a plumber in residence, so uh, I'm in training to listen to how uh, pipes do talk. So if we could hear them, we would understand a whole lot more. Um, we believe that there's the ability to drive water efficiency in multifamily buildings. We believe that you could save uh, around 40 to 50 percent on water costs in a multifamily building. Uh, but there, uh, there's a lot of different reasons why this is possible and why it's important. And when you were first look at uh, what the real liability is here, it's not only just water cost, it's uh, water damage, um, and there's a lot of things going on. It's amazing that we know more about the data that we use on our cell phone than we do about how much water we use. So for a multifamily building owner, um, surprisingly, water is their number one utility cost. This is uh, a study done in 2005 in Minnesota. So I'm going to get to that number, the 305 uh, for water per apartment a little bit later. It's also the highest maintenance cost for a multifamily building. Uh, in New York City, water costs have tripled since 2000. So that graph you saw earlier for the 308, uh, water costs have now tripled, which is around $900 per apartment. Um, and none of the other costs have gone up. We saw the same thing happening with electricity prices in the late 1970s. You see this curve right there. Um, uh, elect electrical submetering started in 1985. So a lot of this is happening. We believe that water submetering is going to start to happen in New York City, and it already is. Uh, it's not only expensive now, but it's going to get a lot more expensive. So it's not just the water that we're using. Uh, we have quite a bit of water in New York City, but it's we have to then treat it too. So if water is used inefficiently, it then goes to a wastewater treatment system. The taxpayer dollars are paying for it. Uh, we talked to a lot of building owners, and they basically just think it's a tax. Um, and what's fascinating about a building is you have a 600-unit building, and you have one main meter, and you have no other information. So when your water costs go up, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, surprisingly, uh, in California, most of the water is used by farmers. In New York City, most of the water is used by multifamily buildings. So how do we apply something like this? Uh, we would argue that um, it's a lot easier to install a water submeter or do something new when it's for a new building. Uh, but 100% of the market right now is the buildings that already exist. And the older buildings are what use the most amount of water. So uh, what's difficult about water submetering is that uh, these buildings are built on stacked risers. So unlike electricity, where there's one place or one panel that you can actually put a submeter, you would have to put it in six different locations on six different pipes. So you can't just install one meter to understand what's going on. Uh, if you could understand what was happening at the fixture level, so tell me what's happening with the toilet or with the shower, you understand uh, if there was a leak, you would then uh, reduce, drastically reduce the amount of insurance claims for a building and therefore insurance costs, and you would drastically reduce uh, the amount of water that was actually being used. With no transparency at all, the bar is set very low. So how do we do this? We get directly to imagine embedding. Um, it's almost like imagine if you could create a Fitbit for a pipe, right? So. Uh, Typically, a toilet is sold. It lasts for 20 years. What if you could embed an operating system in a toilet so that you could upgrade the toilet? You could actually understand what was happening. And uh, a toilet is very easy to understand if you just listen to it. Great. So what if you could create a Fitbit for a pipe? Uh, we spent a lot of years uh, doing this. We've been working on it for around four years. Uh, we've been financed by Samsung. Um, and we found some very interesting findings here. I'll walk you through a little bit how it works. Most of the time, it's installed uh, closer to the toilet, so it's on the supply line. Uh, we have an accelerometer in there. It's battery operated. Um, the key here is when you go into someone's apartment, you want to make sure that you don't have to go back in, and you want to make sure you're not there for a very long time. That's something uh, that we learned over time. But a leaky toilet is very easy to identify. All we're doing is tracking the amount of uh, water that's being filled in a toilet. So when is a toilet filling? And it doesn't matter how the leak occurred, as long as you, it's basically an activity tracker. And if you have an entire building, you have 600 units, and you know you have a leaking toilet, the research says that one in five toilets is leaking. We found that usually like two in five toilets is leaking. So just identify the places where um, 
when, uh, when a pipe is talking, uh, and it's talking a lot, that's when you should definitely listen. Uh, there's the ability to, in the future, we see uh, embedding this stuff into every single fixture. So uh, imagine uh, installing a building, uh, you commission the plumbing system for the first time, and you have all green lights. Uh, a lot of the insurance uh, cost associated with water damage is, happens really, really early on when a, a plumbing system is first installed. So what did we learn doing this? Um, doing wireless in this type of environment is very very tough, especially when you're in a bathroom. So a uh, bathroom has uh, glass, it has porcelain, it has uh, a cabinet. So you go underneath, go underneath the sink, you put a wireless system in there, you then close the cabinet door, you then close the bathroom door. Um, we needed to figure out a way, and everyone does need to figure out a way, how to, how to send uh, data a really long way in these places. So uh, we also realized that you can't have a, a, a gateway or a hub and connect to the internet in every single apartment. Uh, this has to be, we like to call it, the silent sensor. Um, have the building owner install it very, very quickly, uh, but have a gateway that can be installed anywhere in the building. So uh, instead of a gateway in every apartment, uh, we can now send data 25 floors. Uh, and we did this by uh, doing machine learning. This is maybe my favorite part. Um, so in order to get data to listen to pipes, we, uh, you have customers, but you don't want to necessarily go in there uh, when you don't have a solution that works well. But I would suggest for a lot of building owners, letting uh, new technology companies come in and actually collect data in the building is very important. So we would rent, uh, we looked at the numbers, and Airbnbs are very cheap. So we would rent Airbnbs and sit there and hang out next to the plumbing systems, um, which uh, allowed us to collect all the data and then build a machine learning model on the actual sensor so that we're only sending the data that we need to and we can send it a lot further. And a lot of times um, in certain industries, it's the language that we're talking about. So uh, when I first started to dive into this uh, as plumber in residence, I still do not know what a cubic foot is. Uh, I think a gallon is even hard to understand. So instead of saying cubic feet, why is this not about time? The tenant can't control how uh, how often or, or how much volume is coming out of their shower or, or their toilet, they can control how many times they flush and how long they turn the shower on for. So uh, we believe that in the future uh, it'll be based on time and so that you can actually comprehend it. So someone can actually change their habits if they knew uh, if they took a, a, you know, a five minute less uh, shower. And most importantly is that uh, data, when you can capture this and you can, you can actually listen to the pipes, you start to see a cadence of the building. So you can tell when people are waking up. Uh, you can start to operate and turn your heat on a little bit later. So uh, this data is not just, uh, it's a real physical act. Someone has to go to the fixture and turn something on. Uh, and if someone is not there and there's water flowing, we should know about it so we can stop it. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>